Drew Pettifer is with me. He is the founding partner of Lavelle's Solicitors and, more pertinently for our purposes this morning, Lord Bramall's Solicitor. Um, Drew, many thanks for your time. I'm going to go out on a limb and suggest you haven't encountered anything quite like this before in your legal career. Um, I'd have to concede that from the, from the off, yes. It was unprecedented. What was most remarkable? Um, the... Obviously, the, the media interest, and um, from my own analysis of the case, that's essentially at its highest. The case against Lord Bramwell was the um, uncorroborated um, statement of anonymous witness and nothing else. Um, how long it took the police to reach the decision that they did last Friday. But it's only uncorroborated at the end of that investigation, isn't it? I mean, it, it, they need to search for corroboration and then conclude that they haven't been able to find any. Yes, but um, y you have to remember that when... Um, my understanding is that mm. Nick was interviewed at the end of um, 2014, around November time. The police applied for a warrant to search Lord Bramwell's premises on the 2nd of March and executed that warrant on the 4th of March. It wasn't until the 23rd of April I was actually able to get them in a room to explain what the allegations were against him. Um, and upon actually the culmination of the first interview, um, my own analysis of it was, but for the background noise, the case wasn't going to go very far at all. What do you mean by background noise? Like I said, the, the interest both from the media, um, obviously um, other high-profile sex cases, Jana, you've already talked about on your mm. show. Um, but Lord Brownell seemed to be, to me, very much to stand apart from those other people. So if, if, if you had to speculate upon a conversation that took place, it would be something along the lines of, we, we, we have to go in 120% on this one because we've been running at 40% on other investigations in the minds of the public. It's, it's difficult. It's difficult. I mean, I've been listening to some of your um, callers about the phrase mob handed yes. you, you have to remember that when the police um, were executing a warrant they were going in there because they had reasonable suspicion an offence had been committed they were going in there um, to secure evidence that they believed to be relevant to the case if only two of them had gone in bearing in mind we've already you've already discussed how many people were yes. in the property if only two of them had gone in there they'd have been in the property even longer so there were operational considerations as well um but it's um, whether they overcompensated. I think is that that's what you're you're, you're driving at. Yeah. That's um, that's difficult. I do wonder after they went in whether they found what they were expecting to find in terms of evidence, um, because in my experience it's unprecedented to have a situation where a warrant warrant is executed and then not find out or receive any disclosure for some six weeks. What did they find? Um nothing of any evidential value and it was returned um halfway through last year what, what sort of stuff did they take away um pictures speeches and did you ever think they were going to arrest him no no that no. never really beeped on your radar at all no there's no there's no necessity to arrest him there's no necessity he was he was always going to cooperate um everything was done quite cordially so if, if you had to pinpoint the moment at which this, I, I appreciate in terms of your personal experience that the, the scale of media attention and the accompanying circus is, is not going to be something you were familiar with, but in terms of the legal process, the nature of the police investigation, was there a point at which you thought that you were moving into uncharted territory? This was unlike anything you'd, you'd seen before. I started to doubt my original analysis of the case um, because there didn't seem to be any movement, any progress. And I kept looking back over it and thinking, what have I missed? Because yeah. there just didn't seem to be um, anything um, substantial or credible you could base a prosecution on. So you started thinking, well, there must be something. I must have missed it because of the scale of this investigation. Well, there can't be this of, much smoke if there wasn't because, any fire because, in the because, because, of, because of the time it was taking. Right, um, yes. And... But then, obviously, as revelation started to appear in the media, which I'm sure we're all familiar with, um, it started to make... Um, you mean revelations about other accused men? Well, revelations about other accused men, revelations, um, exposés on the accuser. Um, I started to have more um, confidence that my original analysis <laughs> and opinion was right. Yes. How, how did Lord Bramall 
conduct himself during all of this time. I, I've never met the man, but reading what his words are, rather than everybody else piling in on this issue, um, he seems a man of quite extraordinary grace. He is. He, I mean, he, he, he's very honourable. Um, he's a man of great integrity and a man of great dignity. Um, he... It, it's very difficult. I'm, I'm, I'm not even sure I can do... Um, it serviced the impact upon him for a man who's devoted himself to Queen and country and lived his life in public service to then suddenly be accused essentially by the country that he'd fought um, to protect of this. I mean, it was mortifying. And obviously, you've touched upon his poor wife, Lady Bramall, um, suffering as she was at the time and ultimately dying. He was very keen and there was a great sense of frustration that he wanted to um, get um, to last Friday a lot quicker. He wanted the opportunity yes. to answer the allegations to the police. Um, the initial period um, between the execution of the warrant and the um, interview on April the 30th was extremely difficult for him. What, 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 why do you think there was such a, a long period of time there? The, I had um, um, a number of conversations or tried to engage the police a mm. number of times. We were told um, that there was a change in senior management and the senior manager um, needed to be um, briefed. Um, then the, um, what happened next? You have to forgive me because this all seems so long ago. Of course. Sen senior manager, there was a change in senior management, a new ACSO had to be briefed. Um, then they um, wanted to conduct a review whether it was uh, most appropriate to interview at the time, um, which I found strange, bearing in mind they'd had Nick's statement, I believe, for at least three or four months. They felt they had um, enough to apply for and be granted a warrant. And then all of a sudden, we had a whole period of um, silence. He, um, he said himself he will not be writing to the Met Commissioner, Sir Bernard Hogan Howe, but, but to quote him again, other people might put some pressure on him. Uh, I mean, the Prime Minister and the Mayor of London have both waded into the story with uh, sort of cautious calls for an apology from the Met. Does he want an apology? He's not actively seeking an apology, and I'm not going to say an apology would be unwelcome. Um, he wants the restoration of his reputation um, he's concerned about his legacy he very much wants um, to put this all behind him now he understands and he's happy for other people to take up the baton right but he himself this has been incredibly he's 92 I mean, exactly. to say the least it, it, I mean he's, he's, he's already fought enough wars do you think he should get an apology from the Met but bearing in mind the callers you've been listening to saying I didn't get one when I was accused of rape and, and, and similar. But then again, it's a, it's a question of scale, isn't it? And proportionality. Of course, and and the, and the proportion. I mean, this is off the scale. So to this, speak. I mean, this is unprecedented. So you do. Why I'm sitting here I, I, in in the circumstances, um, I'm not calling for one, but um, it would not be unwelcome. <laughs> it's a lawyer's answer, isn't it? <laughs> I'm a lawyer. <laughs> Sorry, James. I can't really complain. <laughs> and, um, and, and in terms of political pressure, I mean, the, the, the Prime Minister getting involved now in the call for an apology, the, the sense abroad that there was a, a history of drop balls in the arena of child sex allegations, against, child sex abuse allegations against prominent public figures. Mm -hmm. could, could you imagine political pressure being brought to bear upon the police, or do you think the buck for the nature and the scale, the proportion of the investigation, stops squarely with, with the police? Well, obviously, I mean, Tom Watson was very vocal. It's very difficult. I mean, I'm not um, privy to the inner machinations of um, the Metropolitan Police, but um, it's, that's really difficult for me to answer. I do not know. You have a view, I, or you just don't want to speculate? I mean, I'm just thinking against the backdrop of your legal experience, of which of which I have none. You look at how this unfolded, and and you eliminate the impossible, and whatever you're left with. I don't, I don't, I don't think there was any political pressure um, to investigate Bramall per se. I think it was um, the Metropolitan Police. To be fair to them, I mean, they've accepted that in the past they haven't responded to allegations as they should have, and they're caught in a very difficult situation. Unfortunately. Um, for them, they happened to investigate someone um, with the record of Lord Bramall when it was quite clear from the early stages, in my view, that there was no substance to the allegations. And yet, the, 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 prob the problem isn't so much the actual um, execution of the warrant and the investigation per se, it's how long 
it's taken to get to the point we're at. So if an apology were forthcoming, it, it should be for the extent of, of the length of this investigation, well, the gap it, it, between it, it, the knock on his door and the letter that you received. Yes, well, if, really if, you, if you think about it, the Metropolitan Police, um, largest police force in the country, they deal with some of the most complex crimes this country faces. There's a lot of intelligent and experienced officers in there. Now, in light of what I've said about my initial analysis of mm. the case, I do not accept that there are there are no police officers that also had grave doubts about the direction of the investigation, the strength of the evidence they had. What I don't understand is how long, why it took so long to get from going through his door and executing the warrant on the 4th of March to January the 15th. And those, those answers are still, still not forthcoming, and they may never be. Well, I mean, perhaps the Goddard Inquiry will look at um, some of those... Um, issues and, and the operational decisions concerned just a couple more things i know i know we're, we're already running over the news a little um if you could address one of the points raised by a caller you don't have to of course you, you didn't know that that was going to happen but the suggestion that all the people speaking up for him now some of them were a little quiet prior to the cessation of no the that, that that is that is that is completely unfair yeah. i will um take responsibility now for the way um his part in the media was conducted i made a conscious decision bearing in mind and you've touched upon how he comes across he's a very gracious man it would have been completely undignified if he'd have started a public war of words it was never um it would have done a disservice to him and you also had to remember at the time when the, the news story first broke i didn't know what the allegations were myself i didn't know what the strength of the evidence was so i had to have one eye on the fact this could end up in court so therefore um despite the offers of support and there were many yes um i asked um people to um, keep their powder dry so to speak um and wanted only the anything that was said to be said directly to the metropolitan police rather than it, um doing a proctor if i can put it like that uh, are you referring to harvey Proctor, well, harvey sort proctor. Of impromptu press conferences mm, uh, yes. having been actually you know accused by the same mm. man that accused lord bramwell but conducting himself in a, in a very different way was lord bramwell himself ever prepared to go to court did he ever i mean lord bramwell i mean would have would have defended himself i mean but did, did he think it would ever come to that well lord bramwell was categoric and he's He's been borne out that he was completely innocent of these charges. Um, so, in his mind, it was a case of the sooner the police could clear him, the better. He never anticipated that it was get he would get as far as being charged. And finally, Drew Pettifer, uh, forgive the clumsiness of this question, but does Lord Bramwell, because the media has now taken the ball and ran with it, mm -hmm. does he actually care whether he gets an apology from the Metropolitan Police or not? I cannot answer that question, not because. Um, I don't want to, simply because I don't know. I, he, he's, he's very hurt, and the I think one of the biggest regrets is that he lost his wife with her not knowing um, the outcome and what was you know, going on around him. I mean, that was, that was very difficult for mm. him. Um, whether he cares or not, I mean, that would be, that would be a matter for him, but, I, but um, I spoke to him yesterday, and he, he doesn't wish to speak to the media in any format. Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Salmon. Hello to you, Paul. Um, you based your model um, for financial security in Scotland on uh, the oil price of about £110 a barrel. I notice it's trading at about 30